I tried that. I've been there. I've done that. I've complained, and guess what? Got me nowhere. You can complain and complain until you're black and blue. It don't change the situation. So complaining don't lead to nothing. So since we know that, why do we keep complaining? I, I look at the children of Israel when they went to Marah. The water was bitter. They stopped to moan and groan and complain. And all they had to do was keep on walking. See, the thing, what I like about, or, or the problem with complaining is, as long as you complain, you don't have the tenacity to keep moving. Yeah, yeah. See, when you begin to complain about the situation, it has you stopped. Yeah. So as long as you stop, you're never going to get to where you got to go because you're too busy complaining about where you are. Yeah. That's why we say that your purpose is bigger than your circumstances. If you can focus on your complaints, how in the world can you rejoice? But if you rejoice through your complaints, you're going to get to where God has you. So Paul is being specific. He got three rules right here. Rejoice. First of all, you wake up in the morning, you let God know, thank you, hallelujah. However you want to praise him, you let him know, first of all, I'm grateful for you getting me up this morning because I know you didn't have to do it. Now, we're not talking about some little G. Are right, we talking about big G, God of gods, king of kings, spends enough time to say, wake up. Oh, you, you don't think you got up because the alarm clock. You don't think you get up because your wife nudged you, right? Oh, that's what some folks must be thinking. They, they don't realize that Alpha and Omega... The God of all gods, the creator of heaven and earth, had to say, get up. See, that, I, 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 I'm convinced. Now I know. <laughs> now I know why we're in the position that we're in. We don't understand that God had to touch us to wake us up. See, when you know that God touched you this morning. Come on. Come on. When you know that God, yeah. not anybody, <laughs> but God touched you. Oh, no wonder we can't rejoice. No. They don't get it. I, 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 I see. I understand. You got to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you belong to the Most High. And nobody wakes you up on this planet other than God himself. And so until you can begin to realize that, you don't understand when Paul says to always rejoice. Because see, whether you think so or not, you got something to be thankful for. Yes, sir. All right. All right. All right. I, I got it. Hold up. I got it. I got it. All right. Do me a favor. Before you go home to your lovely home where it's nice, stop by the nursing home. Uh-huh. Don't go home. Just stop by the nursing home and say, is there anybody who ain't had a visitor? Well, I just want to stop and sit and talk with them for a while. Yeah. And when you get through at the nursing home, go to the hospital. Yes, sir. And say, look, who do you know ain't had a visitor since he's been here? I, 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 I'm on my way home, but the Lord told me to stop by. Because yeah. he's telling y'all, but y'all ain't listening. Uh-huh. Uh, stop by because I want to let them know that even in a down time, yeah. they can still rejoice. Yeah. Yeah. So don't just go straight home. I know you got food waiting on you. I know football waiting. I know you got stuff that's waiting for you. But if you're really concerned about the commission to go out and make disciples of all nations, then you yourself got to take an inventory of why I'm not rejoicing. When I hear a word like this, why does it move me so slow? Uh 